Jacob Harmon. What's going on, brother? Hey, man. Just bumped into Joe Flo here uh, at the California State Tournament. Yeah. It's always good to see that smile, oh, hear that voice. I appreciate it. Well, what do you think of the event so far this year? What's the comp competition like? Oh, the competition is out of control. These kids look college ready right now. I mean, they look savvy. They look smart, very strategic. I don't see a lot of waste in their wrestling. I see very efficient wrestling, a lot of good power, and I think a lot of tactic that's very very awesome to see at this level you know um, that's one thing I'm noticing is a lot of like college tactic trickling down and a lot of scrambling tactic uh, trickling down so I think that's really separating the level of coaching you're like normal football wrestling coach guys gonna get smoked compared to the scientist coaches that are really students of the sport keeping their finger on the pulse of what things are happening at the world level and the collegiate level so obviously the state is very competitive historically, but I think now with media as prevalent as it is and how easy it is to that day see a technique, replay it, replay it, replay it, replay it, replay it, and kids are trying it that evening you know, the next week. And then you see it pop up in competition on the gram and the kids are sharing it around. And it's, it's I think because of the, the social media, for lack of a better term, I think the uh, exponential intelligence and overlap of wrestling is, is growing exponentially right now, and it's a really exciting time to be involved in wrestling and grappling. Yeah, you know, uh, and you, you kind of mentioned it, but I was thinking earlier, how insane is it when you got thousand schools competing, you know, to get here that a school like Buchanan or something, they got like six or eight guys in the semifinals. Amazing. It just really like, let, and I think that, you know, how important good coaching is. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a dynasty built on a dynasty. You know, the Tirapelli family, they are like a dynasty unit. And wherever they decide to drop their landing gear and start growing wrestling, yeah. man, they do amazing things. They have a very systematic approach. They, they have a system that's proven over two to three decades. Yeah. And so now to see them spread out from Clovis over to Buchanan and even some of their coaching lineage go out from there. It's really great to see their influence in the north. You can't forget DC and what he's doing up at Gilroy now. Man, that coaching and staff is insane. The guys say, I mean, that, those Gilroy kids, first of all, yeah. Varela left them with an amazing thing. That guy Greg was, that is an amazing he's coach. He's one of my favorite human beings in all of the wrestling community. And he handed DC and Darren Wynn and all those guys, he handed them gems to work with. And and then DC and them took it to the next level. Crunch burn bunch. Like, hey, yeah. this is an all-star. No, I a, hope those kids understand what they have. They don't. Yeah. They, poss they can't possibly. A yeah. great high-level MMA guy wouldn't understand what he'd have if he had that staff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, those guys are geniuses. And so that's what I'm talking about. That's what our level is. Only thing is, is as much as I can toot my California horn, we still got Ohio to deal with. We still got Pennsylvania to deal with. And those are old, old cultures of wrestling that we have to, you know, bump heads with. And when we go back to Iron Man and things like that, I still unfortunately think we're a little bit behind, you know, at least at some of the transfer. You know, I think the riding uh, back east and the turning and all of that is just so advanced. Yeah. Obviously, we have a culture of takedowns out here. Um, man, if we can marry the two together as fast as possible out here, then I think you're going to see a lot more California recruits going deeper and deeper into the NCAA tournament than in years past. And it's happening. I mean, we've always had our standout guys. We've always had our Dave Schultzes and Abbases and, you know, great guys like that in California yeah. history. But I think we'll have a lot more volume going forward. Seems like uh, with access to coaching and video and everything now that you can bridge a, a 10, 20, 50 year gap like you're seeing in the history or the the culture in PA. In the, you know a lot in like quicker. Days, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just look at it. Yeah. So what? You're uh, you're coaching some some wrestlers and some fighters right now. Training. Yeah. yeah Tell me about. Give me an update. Okay. So right now, basically, I, I work at a couple different MMA gyms. I'm coaching some MMA fighters and also just private coaching some wrestlers. Mm -hmm. I uh, I coach a guy named Pamela Bahal up in Gracie Baja Northridge. He's getting ready for the ADCC competition. I coach Fabrizio Verdum when he competes in grappling. And I also help out Leo Machida when he's competing against a wrestler, a grappler. So I'm doing a lot of, uh, like a lap, <laughs> you know, uh, doing privates with those guys. And then I'm based out of a place called Rounders MMA in Santa Ana. And I, I really love it because it's grassroots. It's a very inexpensive gym. Uh, the clientele there are, you know, solid.
salt of the earth people, hard working people that just come in there, they have goals, they have dreams, there's not a bunch of egos or anything like that, and they just go in there and they want to work, and they want to make their dreams come true, and that's exactly where I want to be, is people like that, no egos, no nothing, and they want to make their dreams come true. I gotta true. get out there. Yeah, yeah, gotta come on out, out anytime, man. You know you can always stay with me, Heck just like yeah. Cliff does all the time. Yeah. So. Yeah, what's up, Cliffy? <laughs> Well, cool. So, uh, last uh, thing. Why, why wrestling? Every, every single night, you always love wrestling, and then you love building, uh, building an outstanding human. So That's why, exactly why you it. You know, I think for me, I mean, I don't want to bring any, like, shame to my family or my upbringing or whatever, but I had a pretty tough upbringing, and my dad, you know, he wasn't really supportive in that way, vocally or whatever, and uh, um, my coaches were like my dad. You know, and, and I think uh, my, my coaches became my, like, a father figure to me, is what mm -hmm. I meant to say. You know, my, uh, in my upbringing, whether it was abuse from my father or whatever, I think I found wrestling with, like, holes in me, you know, and uh, every kid may have some holes in them. And those coaches, they, they patched the holes up, holes in my heart, the holes in my mind, holes in my confidence, holes in my self-respect, holes in my self-image. And when I was done with that process and I looked back at those men, you know, more than being an astronaut, more than being a policeman, more than being something, I wanted to be a healer like those coaches were to me. And, uh, you know, you look at a, a child and you can tell when they walk in, how they're holding themselves or their gait or whatever, and you can see, hmm, he's struggling with insecurity, or maybe this is happening at home, or maybe this, or whatever. And a wise coach has to assess that and gingerly come in almost like a doctor, mm -hmm. you know, and like, hey man, you're looking great today. Man, did you see that shot you just did? Show him something amazing that he just did, and, and just keep patching holes, and just make him believe in himself, and make him believe that he, he can do it, and make him achieve his goals, and make him achieve his dreams. This craft, I hope I do until my last breath. That's the most important craft in my life, is to help someone believe in themselves, to restore their self-respect, restore their self-image. And if that's the only thing that I do for the rest of my life, when, no matter what brand or name I'm wearing, I'm totally content with spending the rest of my life doing that. It's always good to see you, Jacob. Man, so good to see you, Joe yeah. Flo. Got a little one there yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. How old? The best. Uh, 22 months. 22 Coming months. up on 23. He's a, so so he's when are the shoes? When do we get the shoes on him? Oh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm still debating, you know, uh, what do I do? Get him going or uh, gymnastics. keep him, keep him far away? What's the debate? Just start <laughs> yeah, him yeah. in gymnastics. Right. Just start getting him, you know, kinesthetic awareness. Get yeah. his brain-body connection going and let's see what he likes to do. Yeah, yeah. All right. What's his name? Jack, after my dad. Hey, Jack. Oh, that's a good name yeah. after your grandpa. All right, Jack. I know you're going to be great at whatever you do. I can't wait to see what you become. You got an awesome dad that loves you, a mom that loves you, great family. All right, Jack, this is from the past to the future. You're gonna be a champion. Love All you, right. Jacob. Love you too, man.